How's that? Yeah, I can see ya. Hey, I don't know, you look rooted, brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, so bear with me a second. I'll just get this thing going. Just put a hat on. Got bad morning hair. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it, mate. So what time's it over there? Uh, it's 10.30 a.m. 10.30. So you, you haven't been for a ride? You're not going to go for a ride today? No, I'm not going to go for a ride today. It's not on the plan. Mate. I just... Uh, I, Got a, I'm back, been away for a week in the hotel, so it's the most exercise I'll do today will be stock my apartment up with food. Got to find enough energy to go to the shops at some stage. <laughs> so you were saying earlier, um, we had a chat earlier, and I'm recording now, by the way, but yeah. um, you were saying earlier that your hands are just like, you couldn't even hold the handlebars. Like if you were to ride to the shop now, how would the hands be? on the bars because of the cobbles yeah i mean i got a couple of blisters on my hands uh no actually the worst i did a recon a few weeks ago and and one and i and i had more blisters then didn't it in the in the race i've got i got one now on my palm but um which is surprising maybe my hands are a little more used to it but more it's uh, gripping onto the bars over all the cobbles like Straight away this morning, I I woke up and tried to squeeze to make to make a fist, and it, yeah, it was pretty pretty hard to do. And still, again, my fingers are really uh, feeling it from yesterday. Yeah, so it it went out so fast, right? Like I was watching it pretty much the live stream from when they started. How was that first hundred k's? Yeah, it was crazy because. Um, well, for me, the goal was to try and get in the early break or in the early breakaway because being a near pro, I've never done the race before. It just, it, it, I heard so many stories. I mean, yesterday was a little bit different. There was a lot less finishes than usual and the bunch was pretty reduced pretty quickly. But you just hear the stories of how hard it is to position for the cobbles. It's like a bunch sprint of the world champs just to be at the front. So it just made it easier my first one if i got in the in the breakaway that um that then i would already be at the front of the race and then maybe there in the final or something like this to help in that last that last bit is usually what you see but i tried for like i think it was 80 kilometers trying to go with some moves for the uh early breakaway but it was sometimes just hard to even be to get to the front the bunch was going that fast and it was that everyone wanted to be at the front as well. It was a constant, um, you know, swarming to the to the front, which meant that, and we're going that quick that really there was just no chance of anything going away. And it was unbelievable. I looked down, I was starting to feel pretty tired after always pushing to be near the front and go with stuff and thought, shit, I need a rest. But then realized that we're already about to hit the first cobble section. I mean, it just the first 80 or 100K went so quickly. Yeah, so, and you're obviously wearing the national champions jersey, and so did they give you a certain amount of respect sitting in the peloton with the jersey on, or? I mean, I've been thinking about this this year. I did, did a couple of the classics. A couple of you said this: that, oh, do you get uh, respect being the national jersey? I mean, I don't know because I haven't been in Europe without it on. But yeah, being a Sometimes not really because everywhere every team just has a, a job to do, and I think unless you're Peter Sagan or something like this, these guys do a little bit. But everyone just has a job. Everyone wants to be at the front, and I don't think if you're in the way or something, then they have to find a way to get past you. And for for me, in a way, it's the same for the other riders. It's really, a lot of the races over here, it's that's. Uh, the, more than the performance, that's the hard thing is the positioning in this peloton. Yeah, right. And so, you know, it was really dusty, right? And it was really dry uh, in contrast to it being a wet day. Was there talk amongst the group prior to, you know, like it's going to be fast out there and it's going to be, you know, what was the, the discussions around the conditions? Um, yeah, I think everyone knew it was going to be a really fast race because they look uh, leading up the, the team and they're always looking at the wind in mm. the days leading up constantly checking the forecast and then you know my i knew from my roommate daniel Oss, he said to me like it's going to be a really really fast start to RIA. like just stay near the front of it. if it's going to be like last year when it was 
also the same. So they knew it was going to be fast, and then you have the the it's really dry as well. So you're going so fast over the cobbles in a dry, but um, there's crashes as well. You're going that fast with the dust on the cobbles. There's a lot of crashes early on yesterday, mm-hmm. and some ones at high speed. So it can be obviously you think about it being wet, and you think it must be uh really crazy and i'm sure there's a lot of crashes in a wet roof eh? as i've only seen the photos and stuff but you know in the dry as well where there is yeah so what was the worst or best or challenging most challenging cobbled section that you found of the day um or were they all as bad as each other and they just compiled on top of each other i mean there's really there uh, I've there's 29 sections and I've ridden most of them in in training. Some are okay out there, you know. Some are you're going pretty quick and more just gravel roads. But there's just a few, and I knew from the recon it was good of doing these recons recently where I'd gone out because yesterday I was in the group going, oh no, not this section coming up. Mm. Like there's a couple that you <clears throat> sorry mm. really are. Especially those last couple. I think it's the last, maybe the, uh, not the last section before you go into a velodrome, but the, about within that 10 to 6 kilometers to go, there's two really nasty sections there. And worst is you've already got over, you've got 250k in the legs, mm. all those cobbles, and you hit them, and it's, you know, sometimes really feels like you're taking a beating. Obviously, mm. also the Arenberg as well is a really tough one. It, it is really tough, is it? It is everything that it lives up to. Yeah, it's um, the sur- it's okay. The surface is okay. The other ones, you have big potholes and just if you hit a big, it can be nasty. But the Arenberg in the middle, right in the middle there, it's pretty rough. It yeah. is. You're really getting smashed about there. So what, what I really wanted to ask you about, and I saw a glimpse of this when Greg had that mechanical... There was obviously a lot of panic. You were sitting on the back of the bunch as if, as if guarding, you know, if he did have a mechanical, you were there. And then I saw you a glimpse of you dragging him back on through these roundabouts. Talk to me about that. So did he, he started screaming and what happened? Because I saw him panic when he had first had the mechanical. Yeah, there was, bef- just before this also happened, he, he was at the back and some something was uh, wrong with the bike and, um, for me, after trying to be in an early break and using some energy, rather than push my way to the, the front, I kind of took a different tactic of I was just giving myself a little bit of room on the back of the peloton. I didn't want to get caught up in a crash. And I was just kind of trying to ride myself into the back into the race a little bit almost after. Because at this moment, I'm going, we got so far to go and I'm not really feeling too good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, after after some earlier efforts so yeah i was just kind of it was yeah for me that was kind of stay near the back and there was a couple of times where i help a, a teammate after a puncher but then with greg there also he started moving up again i remember and i just stayed back again i thought no i'll just stay here and try and ride my own race a bit and then i saw him got tangled up in the crash and yeah it was real panic through the radio and stuff like this and i Set back like I'll wait, I'll wait, and um, so I the the bunch is going away on the, the cobbles, and I'm waiting for Greg. It's taking a while. Um, I was a little bit surprised that uh, maybe it's such a crucial moment because we're now five kilometres from the Arenberg, and it's a full race to get there. And I'd heard before the race. I mean, my goal was to help going into the Arenberg uh, more at the the front of the peloton but i just heard about how much how high speed it is going there and that really opens up the race so i thought straight away this is is really not a good moment for something mm-hmm. like this to happen so for me i knew this isn't good and uh we got to the end of that section greg got onto my wheel and i looked around you know there's no other teammates or anything and i, I couldn't see the bunch ahead and i thought yeah holy crap i gotta give the best cup of okay of my life here and I really it felt a bit of pressure there almost, actually. You know, leader, I'm there with the leader of the team and got to try and get him across to the next group. And luckily I rode, I think, one or two K 
um, with Greg on my wheel as hard as I could. There are other riders around, but it was just pretty much I was just go straight past them. It was go as fast as I could to get to the next group. And we had two guys there, Quincy Ardo and Mentoso, and then three of us rode flat out to Arenberg. And uh, that's where Greg uh, rode away from that group to get back to the front group. So, so, you know, so what a crew. That, that's the race. Cra- that's yeah. crazy, man. So you guys are smashing it with Greg on your wheel, and then when he got to the Arenberg, he rode away from you guys, and you couldn't go with him, or what was that like? Well, basically, we, uh, I rode him across to I think a group of twenty or so, and then we caught a, another group. So it was actually there was a big group there that had kind of missed a split. You had riders there like Ian Stanner and stuff like this, and um, I think Greg rode away from that big group with uh, Christoph, I think, to get to the front group. So there was a few kind of favourites that had missed that front front split. So for us almost it was just get into that group and then we kept riding as hard as we could to close it down before Arenberg. But unfortunately for me, you know, Greg's riding off the front of that group and I'm getting dispatched from that group because... You know, normally you want to be hit, hitting the Arenberg feeling good, but I think I hit the Arenberg with lactic acid coming out my ears. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it was the Arenberg went forever for me. Yeah. <laughs> hitting it that fight after a max effort and then having to get through there was, yeah, hopefully it's better in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, pretty amazing, man. We were watching you. I remember seeing a couple of shots on SBS and you were literally on the front driving and I was like just screaming. And I think uh, everyone in Australia was because we knew what happened, and we knew we, you were there, so we knew that you were going to try and take him across, and so that was pretty exciting. But uh, any any real highlights of the race, or any any inside stuff that you can tell us that was pretty amazing of the day? Um, I mean, I heard it. Uh, I haven't watched the race, but I heard that obviously it was really um, special what what Daniel Oss did. The other guy who was there in the front with um, with Greg in the last 20k or so, but really we yeah, had a crucial moment was probably that moment we talked about just then. And um, yeah, once I can only hear just hear a little bit in the radio what's happening uh, up ahead, but it cut out with about 20 20k to go. But um, yeah, I think you know that was a crucial moment where I was really a, a part of the race, and then. You know, the race goes on at the front and everything, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah that was uh, the more crazy, the crazy part of the race. Did you see, did you have anyone from the team or did you have uh, GVA come up to you and just say, mate, awesome? Do you know, did anyone give you any accolades for your effort? Yeah, yeah, and they did like a, I was at, there was just uh, Greg and I at the hotel, the only riders last night. We went back with all the staff from because the service course is here in Belgium. So we went back to the Belgium hotel where the team normally stays, and Greg's family and a lot of staff were there. And yeah, I mean Greg's a really good guy and really like a, appreciative and stuff. So yeah, he said a nice thanks and everything, which is good. So good for me and my first Roubaix anyway. And then the, the big boss of the team did a, a nice a nice toast to me as well for for today. So yeah. You know, there's a memorable Roubaix, and you know, for a lot, it's it's great going into the race. I didn't really, I was struggling to get the head around the fact that I was doing Roubaix a little bit in the days leading up. Like it was kind of just felt like another race, and I was like, yeah, I should be feeling different, you know. And uh, but really, after the race, it was for you think for some of the mechanics or something that have worked alongside Greg for years now and all those sales. A lot of emotion, like a lot of emotional people in the 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 team, other than just the riders. So for me, it's hard to grasp a little bit because my first, I'm still only a few months in with this team, and uh, to but to see the people that have been there for years or every and everything like this, you know, yeah, 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 is really. Day. I mean, yeah. Greg's a really, he's just. Uh, He's probably already thinking about Amstel Gold Race next weekend. Like, he win all these classics, but he's just such a racer and he just loves racing his bike. And I think he just w- will be like, yes, I won, and he's ready to go for the next one, which is crazy. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's 
because the whole season of racing, it's a little bit like you just, okay, yep, Ruve done, on to mm. the next one. <laughs> you what know, a legend, so man. That's so good. Where's the next race for you? What, are you doing the Giro? Are you doing any of the Grand Tours? Yeah, no Grand Tours. Um, you know, I did the big one-day races and maybe the Grand Tours, for me, I mean, eventually I'll have to do one, but it's not something that really excites me too much, racing racing the bike for 21 days. Mm. Um, come but, do, come uh, and yeah. do the Indy Pack, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. This race, I was following this race and looked crazy. Yeah. You know, wow. Yeah. But uh, the eventually the um, Grand Tours will be something I do, but it'll be one-week races. I do one starting next weekend yeah. called Tour of the Apps. So I think the name... And if a race gives you a hint of what I'm in for. <laughs> oh, God. Better you than me, brother. Um, so, yeah. All right, mate. I won't no, keep you up. I'll let, I'll let you go chill. But... Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Good Cheers. on you, bro. Thanks again, man. Thanks. Bye.